Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra Tea Designs, and today I have this fun Easter teacup card to share with you. So let's jump right in. So I'm going to start by trimming down what I want to use for my background. I have a piece of my black matte cardstock that I really like for matting, and then I have a piece of the Distress watercolor cardstock. And I'm using the deckled edge trimmer for this. And now I trimmed off, I believe between the two layers, the white and the black, there's only about... Uh, like a 16th of an inch difference, um, but I gave the black mat about a quarter of an inch to go around the white base, which is an A2 sized base. I know that that's not great, but you guys know if you've been with me for a minute that I pretty much eyeball all of my measurements. So generally they're a bit off unless I'm kind of like following along with a, a certain measurement or guide. Um, otherwise it's pretty much just me winging it, which usually works out. So it's okay. So I did trim that down and I did use a deckled edge trimmer just because I wanted that kind of more interest and texture in the background. And then to create the background panel, I brought in two colors of Distress Oxide ink. I have Kitsch Flamingo and Lost Shadow. And I also have a this little white mat that I, you see me spraying stuff on. Uh, that is the same mat that is in the, le, le, uh, I guess that'd be the right hand corner. Um, that's on the glass mat that comes from Tim Holtz. I just have a spare one and I use that anytime I want to use the smooshing technique just because for me it's easier to grab my spare one than to worry about how my lights are going to react with my glass mat. So I kind of use the other one to diffuse the my overhead lights when I create. So I'm going to use that to just smoosh out my two ink colors and create my background. So I'm going to show you here that I am going to heat set it between each layer. I'm not going to continue to show you that. You understand that I'm heat setting it between each layer. And this is just because I want my layers to layer as opposed to blend. So if you have them wet still, they're going to blend instead of layer on top of each other. And I really wanted the first one. I did the two colors together to got, get a little bit of a blend of color. And then for the next couple of smooshes, I, I just do the one color individually. So I started here with lost shadow after I'd kind of done that background layer and then I'm going to dry it. And then I wanted a little bit more lost shadow. So I did this again where I'm just smooshing it down on the mat and then I add some water and I just kind of swirl my fingers through it so that you don't get this kind of square shape. Um, Tim Holtz taught me that in one of his many, many cool videos. Uh, and then I just brought in that Kitsch Flamingo again and used it once more to um, add a little more pink to the design. And then for the cups, I really wanted this beautiful spring colored paper that I have in my stash. Any colored cardstock would work for this. Uh, this is or pattern paper in this instance. This is just the pattern paper I have. And yes, I was using the rotary trimmer there. Uh, I bought it. I'm excited about it for different reasons, mostly for heavier things like chipboard um, and the really heavy cardstock that I'm using to make my postcards. Uh, if you guys know or have been following my vlogs, you know that I'm creating my own postcards to sell on my Etsy shop. So I brought that in to you cut the cardstock, but it works really well with 12 by 12 paper and it gives me a more correct cut than my uh, guillotine trimmer. So I really like it for that. And I just wanted to have two thinner strips here so that I could use it to cut out the cups. So I chose to use pattern paper for this just because I wanted it to kind of have a more vintage china cup feel. Um, the background is quite bright and vibrant, but the cups... I don't want them to overpower the background, so I didn't want to have two bright elements fighting each other, but at the same time, I don't want them to not be pretty, so I brought in this really pretty pattern paper that I have in my stash for a different project that I'm going to do for you guys here pretty quick, um, but I just wanted this little section of it to kind of do something pretty. So for the bottom cup... I have, because that I'm going to stack the cups you guys saw from the first image, and I have, so I have three of the cups, and I did the most bottom layer in a holographic foil cardstock, because I love how that looks with it popping through the other layers, and then for the next two layers of each cup, I used this really pretty pattern paper, and then I used the same pattern paper to do the saucer that the cups are going to sit on, and we're going to adhere them all together, and I'll kind of walk you through the layers here in a second, but this was kind of my thought process as to what colors I wanted, and now I've used pinch bowls in the past to kind of keep my pieces separate, but I didn't really feel like I needed it for this because it's only three cups this time. So I'm kind of just 
keeping the pieces together on my glass mat so I know where they belong and what goes with what. And I chose not to put anything in the cups liquid wise because I'm stacking the cups. All right, so it wouldn't have, to me, it doesn't make sense if I had added um, like a, a dark color in the cup to represent a liquid um, because, I mean, I'm, I'm stacking the cups up so you would hope that they would be empty, uh, but that was kind of my thought process there. So now I'm just going to adhere all the little layers. So it starts out with the base layer that you know that I've cut out of that holographic cardstock and then you get the layer that's the next biggest, which is a pretty much another full layer of the cup except for that one piece on the right hand side and the handle. And then you add the topmost piece, which would be your highlight. Uh, so you could have done it in a lighter colored cardstock. In this case, I just chose to have it be similar to whatever the second layer of the cup was uh, because I didn't want it to have a bright highlight. But the idea is that you would use like a dark, a mid and a light and create a lot of dimension on the cup. Um, so that's kind of the thought behind the design of the dies, which I think is phenomenal. And I need to try that because so far I haven't done that with my cups, um, but I just, I like to do it this way and I like to not do things the way I'm supposed to do them, I guess. I don't know. I just had fun doing it this way. And then you can hear, see here I used my art glitter glue because it has such a fine tip. So it makes it really easy for me to adhere things on top of one another. Um, and I, I was really careful to make sure that because the cups have a little opening on the top of them, I was really careful to make sure that none of the glue or anything got near those those little slits in the cup or you wouldn't be able to put the cups inside one another. So they are intentionally designed so that you can do this. Um, so I just wanted to be really careful to not put anything over that because then you wouldn't be able to put them in together. And then when I kind of had an idea of what I wanted in my cups, I'm going to make my steam first. So I, I did this kind of design um, the first time I did my cup card uh, and I thought it was really cool. You'd, so I did two layers of vellum. I did my heavyweight vellum on the base and then I did the pearlescent vellum from Lawn Fawn as the steam on the top. And it just adds some really interesting shimmer to the steam because it's moving. So I thought that that was a really cool texture. So I just, I enjoy how this looks. And of course, a lot of these dies I had to poke out with my uh, craft pick, but I did end up ripping the steam layer later, but it doesn't matter. I fixed it. And then for this, it was just, I wanted a little more interest to go behind the cups so that they kind of were their own focal. And I knew it was going to go off the side of the card. So I didn't worry about centering it on my vellum. I just cut it out. And now I have no idea if you can get this die still. It came in a, I believe my Black Friday box last year from Simon's Stamp. Um, so... If you can get it, I'll have it linked and listed. If not, I'll have something similar. But anything that would create some interest will work here. I just needed it to differentiate the background and to where my cups are sitting. So that was kind of my thought there. And then to make it so that the vellum was really easy to adhere, I'm going to run them through my Xyron sticker maker so that I don't have to worry about adhesive showing through the vellum layers. Uh, just because this is, of course, the vellum will show and it changes the color when you add adhesive to them. So... This is just one of the easiest ways I've found to kind of add adhesive to the vellum. And this is also where I'm going to layer up my two layers of the vellum because it's just the easiest time to do that. And then leave it there until I'm ready to actually adhere everything down to the card. Uh, so this is where I ripped that small piece of vellum, but I don't think that you can really tell. I just adhered that last piece on top where it was supposed to go anyways. So I don't really think that it matters, but I did actually rip it. And then I'm going to adhere my layers down. So I did use kind of a mix of my Nouveau Deluxe glue and the Art Glitter glue. There's no right or wrong way for this. I mean, whatever adhesive you enjoy using is what you should use. I tend towards a liquid glue because it gives me time to actually wiggle things around and I generally need that. Uh, but there's no, you know, right or wrong way to do card making. It really is whatever you want to do. It's, it's going to be amazing. So whatever preference you have by all means that's what you should use and then I brought the decalage trimmer in once again to just kind of trim that it the vellum piece down a little bit so that I could it wasn't gonna go over the layer but I couldn't cut it afterwards because then it would have been straight um, or I would have trimmed into the background so I just chose to trim it first and judge where I kind of wanted everything to be. And then I'm going to start building my stack of cups. So you can see here that I'm only adding adhesive to the bottom of the cup and the top of the cup where like above the lip so that it, uh, the other cup can still slide in. And to make sure that there was no adhesive where I didn't want it, I did bring in my reverse tweezers and just kind of slid them around to make sure that there was nothing in there kind of trying to 
adhere that one shut and then for the second cup I'm just gonna put like a little bit of glue on the very top behind the cup sorry I got out of frame there I got it really close to my face so I could see what I was doing so I didn't accidentally glue that cup shut and then we wouldn't be able to stack the third cup in the top there but I just checked it again with my reverse tweezers to make sure that I didn't have any issues that way and then I mean there's there's no right way or wrong way to do this um I mean I'm not adding any more cups so here I was able to just adhere I just put some glue behind the cup and it didn't really matter because there was going to be no more adhesive, no more cups are going into this little stack. And then this is kind of where I decided to put the adhesive behind the vellum. Now, there are other ways you could have done this. This is what I did because I was, you know, flying by the seat of my pants as I usually do when I create. And I think it worked out okay. But there's no right or wrong way to do anything when it comes to creating, I don't think. So you just do what works for you. And I did add steam on top of the cups. Thinking about it now, since I just told you guys there was no liquid in the cups, the steam doesn't make as much sense as it should. Um, but I just, I like the movement of it. So it just kind of adds some interest and texture to the top of the card, which I like. And I like the steam. I think it's really pretty. And then I decided that I was going to make, I knew this was going to be an Easter card. But this is where I decided to bring in just a label sentiment sentiment label strip from um, Simon Says Stamp and use that to, to sit underneath my cups and add a little bit more ground to the design so that the cups didn't feel as much like they were just kind of floating in the air. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason to what I do half the time. I just kind of get a design in mind and then try it out and hope that it's going to work the way I see it in my head. So I did just adhere that straight down and I did cut it out with the decal trimmer just to give it that same kind of textured edge that my um, colored panel and my base have. Um, or my mat, I guess. And then I'm going to add some adhesive so that I can put it onto the card base. I've had people ask me why I add so much glue. And honestly, it's just so I can move it around so that it can be centered. Um, I find the less adhesive you add, the harder it is to actually move the panel to get some wiggle room in there. So that's just kind of my my reasoning behind it. Uh, and then because I can't ever leave anything alone, I did add a couple of these really pretty white pearls to the design just because they feel very Eastery to me and I love how that looks. So this is the card that I created for you guys today. I love how it turned out. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, it's a little bit different than my usual, but I think that it turned out really pretty and I quite enjoyed making it so let me know what you think I'd love it if you'd leave me a like leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already I do new videos every Monday and Thursday thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon bye bye for now